Today we're going to look at how to get the best out of Zoom when you're using it to record your podcast episodes and how to integrate those into your Descript session. So if you're using Descript to edit your podcast, Descript has included now functionality for you to be able to integrate Zoom and then import straight into Zoom from the Zoom cloud into Descript, which is pretty awesome. It does certainly save you a lot of time, but there are a few things that you might want to actually click on and set up in your settings here to make sure that your Zoom cloud recordings are as good as possible. And so I'm just going to run through the whole process here to make sure that you've set it up the best way that you can. I certainly don't recommend that you use Zoom as the way you record your podcast, but I do also understand that a lot of people just do it. So I want you to do the best possible thing that you can here with using Zoom. So if you log in, you have to make sure that you can actually do cloud recordings on Zoom because some of the pricing plans, I think maybe the free plan, doesn't allow you to have uh, cloud recordings, cloud storage here. Yeah, so you have to at least be on the pro to get cloud storage. Uh, which means that would be how you actually get the integration to work with Descript. So if we go back to the Zoom settings, let's assume you're doing cloud recordings. You wanna go to settings, you wanna go to recording, and then there's a whole bunch of things that you can tick and untick here. These are the important aspects to make sure that you actually have ticked. Untick display participants' names in the recording because we don't want that, it just doesn't look very good on video. Record audio only files ticked and record a separate audio file of each participant so that at least you can play with their audio in post-production if there's some crosstalk and some things you want to remove. So make sure you've uh, got that organized. Record active speaker with shared speaker. I'm just leaving that ticked on as well as, as well as gallery view. I leave that ticked on, not for podcasting. I'm not going to share my screen with podcasting, but I use it for other things, like when I'm running meetings. Record active speaker, gallery view, and shared screen separately. Yes, active speaker and gallery view. You can do shared screen if you want, but for podcasting, I'm not gonna do that. And if I'm doing a shared screen for a meeting, I also really don't want it to just be the shared screen by itself. I'll just have it in on something else. So they're the ones you need to make sure that you tick. Now, unfortunately with Zoom at time of recording, you can't have individual video files of each person. Like one video file is the one person, one video file is the other person. The best that you can do is probably gallery view. And then you could, in your post-production phase, you could like cut one portion of the gallery view out, which is just one person and then cut the other one out and sort of layer them in together and make it look a bit better that way. You could do that. That's kind of the only way that you can have both of you on screen, both reacting to things at the same time whereas with active speaker it switches based on who's talking so you don't actually have a video file of the guest if they're reacting to something that you're saying without talking so that's why it's important and i say to have both of these things ticked just so that you've got a little bit of versatility as to what to play with the other thing that you might want to tick is this optimize the recording for third party video editor so that actually just means that it will increase the file size it will increase the quality of the video that comes out so that you get the highest possible you know range of things it does mean that it eats up more of your cloud storage it does mean that it's going to take longer to process let's say you've done a 20 minute video and you've optimized the recording for third party video editing Uh, it could take you know up to an hour to process the video or it could be even longer depends on how high quality the actual input is so in this case you know i'm recording in 4k it could take quite a long time if there's up to 45 minutes of a guest episode that processing time is going to take quite a while so just be aware of that it is good to have it optimized if you're going to be using it as your podcast on youtube and using the video and using the snippets and things on there it's definitely good to optimize it but it just means that it's going to take longer to process and it's going to eat up more of your storage so once you've done that you hit save They're kind of the only things I really care about from the recording perspective on Zoom. And then from there, you're really ready to get going and to actually record an actual episode. So what I've already done is recorded a bit of a test video with one of our staff here at Bambi Media, Emily. 
and she now is in with me in the recordings and transcripts. So this is finished processing and it is ready for me to do stuff with. You can see it's actually this one here, Brianna's Zoom meeting. I'm going to change the name of that recording by clicking on it in here and I can change this up here to be Bambi Emily test testing save and I can change this to to guest test interview just so that it's easy for me to find when I go into Descript, which I'm about to show you what to do. You can see that the cloud recording has done a speaker view, a gallery view. So those are the things that I ticked on that I wanted to make sure were separate files. And it's also got an audio file of each participant. It's got me and it's got Emily in there as well. So you could download all of those files and then upload them to your uh, you know, DAW of choice, be that Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve or Descript, any of those. But for this purpose, we're now gonna go into Descript and we're going to integrate it without actually having to download and upload anything. So I've got rid of my face here now, so you can't see me, but that's okay. I figure it's probably easier so you can see the whole screen. If you just go up to Descript now, go to new project and then go video project, it's going to prompt you firstly to decide what you want to, like how you want to actually get whatever it is uploaded. In this case, we're going to go import from Zoom. And that's why it was really important for us to make sure that the naming was easy for you to understand, to find, because if you've got lots of like cloud recordings and they're all just, you know, Brianna and Saldo's recording, then it's really hard to understand which one you're actually wanting to import. So we're going to import this one. This is the top one. And then it's going to take a little bit of time to just import those files. You can see it's importing four. That means it's importing the gallery view, the speaker view, and those two audio files. That was what I selected in the back end of the Zoom cloud. And so that is exactly what it is importing. Now it has actually imported, but it is going straight to transcribing the content. And so then we just let it transcribe that content. Now, if we click on this little show timeline button down at, here at the bottom, you can see that the audio and video is appearing. The transcription has now finished, so it's at 100%. And then the next thing I'm gonna get you to actually do is now we're going to fix up the framing of this zoom video to make it so that both of them appear much larger than they actually are here we don't want this zoom black bars either side we want it to be full frame if possible so you're going to right click you're going to go to edit sequence and then you can see the back end of everything now so you can see the gallery view the speaker view my side and emily's side Firstly, we're gonna get rid of some of this audio because we don't need it. So if we go to gallery view, you're gonna right click, you're gonna detach the audio. It's gonna put it on a separate track, which is just an audio file. We don't need that because we have individual files for each guest. So click on this one here. This is the gallery view audio only, delete that track. Then we're going to look at the speaker view. Now the speaker view, I'm probably not going to use uh, just because again, the quality isn't that great and it's just Emily and then me sometimes uh, as well. So that's gonna be harder for me to chop up and actually use. So we're going to just actually delete this whole file. We don't need it at all. So we just click on that, make sure it's on the right track and just delete the track. Now we have a gallery view and both sides. The next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna see if the video is lagging with the audio at all. It probably is. Okay, this is Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, Bree. thanks for having me. Emily's side is fine. My side is a little bit laggy. So we're just gonna see if we can move that audio around to make it line up with my mouth a little bit more. So it's actually gonna go this way a bit. Okay, this is Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, Bree. thanks for having me. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Emily works just a little tiny bit more. Okay, this is Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, Brady. Thanks for having me. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Emily works here at Ben. It's not perfect, but for the con, like I would spend a lot longer on getting that right. But this is just to give you an idea as to the actual kind of movement you might need to make to get the file loaded up with the with no delay with the audio and video. So now that I'm happy enough, let's say I'm completely happy with that, then I'm going to actually create a duplicate of the gallery view, and then this will make sense 
in a moment as to why I'm doing that. So if we go back up here and we go add media and then we go to recordings and then we go individual tracks, you can see speaker view is here and gallery view is here. Now I'm gonna go add new track and that's gonna give me another gallery view. So I'm gonna right click on the gallery view, detach the audio again, because again, I don't need that. And I'm gonna delete that track. Now we move the gallery view up to the other one. So now you've got two gallery views together and you've got those two audio files there as well. Then we're gonna hit done. Yep. And now you've got both of us in here ready to go. Now, the next step I would then do is actually do all of the EQ. I would do the compression. I would do the edit so that it all sounds good. It's flowing really well. I would do a proper edit of this. But for this purpose, for this video, I'm not gonna go into a full edit and all the things that I would normally do with a file because it, it's not the purpose of this particular video. The purpose of this particular video is getting your framing sitting right so that it sits on the whole frame within your widescreen format. And there's no big black bars and it looks as good as possible. So let's go through that right now. If we click on scene and we go to layers, you can see there's two versions actually of the gallery view, but one of them has no, like its eyes are closed, so it's not actually there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this first one here and we're going to actually just create my side. So that involves us cropping. We're gonna crop from the side here, get rid of Emily, crop up the top and down the bottom. So crop here, let's get rid of all the black bar. And now we've got my side. Now we're gonna go back to the scene and we're going to go back to the gallery view and make it active. And you can see there's Emily now, but I'm going to just get rid of mine, like hide mine for the moment because it's quite distracting. We're gonna go back to crop and we're going to crop me out this time. So crop me out here, get rid of that black bar, get rid of that black bar. Now we've got me and Emily together, woohoo. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to make this big. So either side is now a full frame. Now you could go position and then fill canvas and it's gonna make a big one, but we're not gonna do that because we want both of us in the track. So I'm just going to zoom up till I get the whole frame like this. And then I'm gonna crop further. Cropping mode on. And Emily's in the center, so I'm gonna just do that. That gives me my center point, close enough anyway. And that's done, my side is done. Now we go to Emily's. Again, we make it big. Oh. Okay, we're gonna move her over. See how our heads are kind of the same size now? So that's good and we're done. Now, this is why I said it's important to, oh, we, I can see this little bit of black bar here. So let's just make this a bit bigger. Okay, this is why I said it's important if you can, if you have the capabilities to have the optimized for video on, optimi optimized for you know third party video software, if you have that on, you'll have a much better quality video than this. This has crunched it so far to the point where I just don't think it looks very okay, good. This is Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, Brady. Thanks for having me. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Emily works here at Bambi Media, everybody. So FYI, although she doesn't work here. So you can see I'm super pixelated. It's really crunched my video. I have a very high quality video like camera and Zoom's like, oh my God, how do I deal with that? <laughs> so if you don't optimize your video, that's this is what you're gonna get. So please try and do that uh, so that you can at least get the best quality out of it as possible. But you can see here, now we've got both of you, both of the people in the frame together the whole time. And if that's the way you wanna play it, then you can now, 
do that on YouTube. You could put this whole thing on YouTube. You know, you could put some captions in if you wanted. If you went to uh, one of these things, captions, and then you wanted to put some captions in, you could do all sorts of things, which we're not going to go through in this particular video. This video is just to make you aware of how to actually change the framing. Now, the uh, last thing that I'll say that you might want to do in the actual effects area to make it look a bit better is if you click on me and you go effects, and you go color adjustments, then there are some things you can change here to maybe make it just look that bit better. So if we have a little bit more of the contrast, if we play with the highlights, maybe turn them down a little bit, we give us a bit more shadow, more or less, you know, depending on the sort of stylistic view that you're looking for, the saturation, if we wanted to introduce more color or reduce some color, or even change the, uh, actual temperature of the thing. So if we went 6700 and it gave it a bit more of a blue tinge, you can do all those things uh, to make it just look a little bit better. And then you could do the same for Emily's side. You could decide, okay, cool. I just want to give it like her. She needs a little bit more contrast. She doesn't need much in the way of exposure. We could see how this isn't changing much here. It's got some highlights, but there's just not enough in the video to really do too much with. And we've got shadows to play with, so we could give it a little bit of a play with the shadows, etc. So then you could expect when you are having a guest on who hasn't been prepped at all, you get it a little bit better, uh, but again, not something. And I mean, that's not the color adjustment I would potentially do for that, but I, you can see it's given it a little bit more life, but I uh, would probably take down the saturation a little bit. I make a few other adjustments to actually get that sitting where I think would look best. That is how you do it. Okay. So if you want to import your zoom video recordings into Descript, I've just shown you really easily how to do that. I've also just shown you how to make them full frame using the gallery view on both sides so that you both have everything in there. I've shown you how to delete tracks. I've shown you a lot of things in this little video, but we haven't gone through how to edit or anything like that. I have a whole course. It's a completely free course. It's a DIY podcaster course, which I will put in the links below, which shows you how to actually edit things if you would like, or if you want to get some hardcore tutoring <laughs> done, if you are struggling to do this yourself and you really just want some help getting through some troubleshooting stuff that's causing you some anguish, then you can book in for tutoring sessions with us here at Bambi Media and we will help you through these pitfalls that you find really annoying. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hopefully that was really helpful. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for more as always.